Hey guys, it's Troy again and wanted to share with you some of my latest acquisitions. One of the things I love about this particular hobby uh, is getting out and the hunt a little bit and as well as when I score a few things that I've never tried before. Um, that's what I've got here today is one thing I've never tried before and I wanted to share with you. Uh, now I just recorded my last video that I put up about uh, uh, more on collecting vintage fountain pens and I take my own advice a matter of fact I took my son Matthew out with me just yesterday I'm recording this on a Sunday evening and uh, we went to a flea market and we went to antique shops and you know we brought um, a, a little loop with us and we looked for bargains and we looked for stuff that was quality and I actually found uh, there's one cash uh, one seller at a flea market mall that uh, has a bunch of fountain pens and we looked at them a lot of them were off-brand but boy they really wanted an awful lot of money really proud of their prices and they were and there was only one pen out of the whole lot that interested me but they're trying to sell a pen that I would have to take and refurbish uh, I definitely had to put in a new nib for an old Esterbrook dollar pen and uh, put on a new sack and they were trying to get the kind of price that you would expect to see refurbished so I had to pass on those but we kept searching and hunting and I passed out flyers to antique dealers and that kind of thing so I do take my own advice when I go shopping um, and also I do still even though I gave advice about doing that stuff um, when you go out and about and you're in person uh, online on eBay I do take some of my own advice and like I said it's a hit or miss thing now I'm into Waterman pens as a lot of you know and I added another pen to my collection it's a Waterman Stalwart now the Stalwart was more or less of a student kind of pen probably from the 1940s 1950s it's a lever filler this one had been refurbished um, on this particular one it's not all that unusual you can tell that the cap is just a little bit different color than the barrel it is the same uh, kind of acrylic or or ce uh, celluloid if that's what it is but you can tell my cat's been around with a little hair here or there but anyway it fills up nicely it actually writes pretty nicely um, I've already run this thing dry on ink um, it didn't hold as much ink as I thought it would be because I didn't write as much as I normally would uh, before I ran out of ink uh, but I'll play with it some more and I'll, I'll fill it up again and we'll see how far I get with that writing because maybe I just didn't get a real good ink fill in the first time around but it does write fairly nicely and it's got a fairly rigid nib to it but it's also fairly smooth so a Waterman stalwart has been added to my collection alright um, let's see oh another uh, pen that I got now uh, about a year ago, I got one of these for my son, Matthew. Most of you, uh, maybe uh, you've seen some of the videos with Matthew, but I got him a Lamy student pen. And this, believe it or not, even though it's meant for kids in elementary school, it writes very, very well. I knew it would because he's got one, only it's, you know, like a bright red at, at the tail. Almost looks like a baseball bat to me, but, um, you know, it is a German pen by Lamy okay and you pull it off and you got the the typical Lamy nib that you would see and it writes pretty smoothly and I didn't have any Lamy converters laying around so I did have however some Lamy cartridges so I threw in a Lamy cartridge and as expected it writes smoothly and very nicely like a Lamy should in my humble yet most accurate opinion so it's got that plastic top it's got that plastic barrel. It's got that, uh, I mean, well, this is like kind of a wooden barrel. And you got that for the section. I mean, it's, it's, it's a rubberized plastic. So if you can deal with that, like some people can, some people can't. But it's got, you know, um, it's got the grip, the, pe the, the little finger indentions right there. So it's only got on both sides, and it's rounded on the bottom. So the idea is to, or that's where you put your two fingers for the typical triangular grip. And, you know, it's, it's squared off here, so it's got that roll stop to it. An inexpensive pen. I actually got this at a uh, charity auction. Uh, not very expensive. And I think $15, including shipping, to get it to me. And it writes very nicely. So I'm happy with it, um, and like I said, I already tried one, Matthew had one, now I've got one to go along with it. We have matching pens. Alrighty, um, 
Kenro once in a while will um, will have some specials running on their website. Kenro uh, is the distributor for a lot of different brands and some very nice brands here um, in in the U.S. And um, you know when when you're going to get uh, some upper end pens, perhaps Montegrappa, Aurora, uh, Kenro is the distributor for those. I get their email newsletter and sometimes if uh, they've got some specials going on they'll put it in their newsletter so I saw one and I jumped on it I said what the heck they have an Aurora um, style they had several of them and what they had was a mismatched sale Franken pen if you will where they took parts from different pens and they put them together now these are all new pens uh, but they had parts laying around so they put them together so they had you know the black barrel and they had the cap for an aurora style uh that was yellow so they put them together to like kind of like a bumblebee and i said you know what for the price they knocked a whole lot off the price and i said i'll take that <laughs> what the heck i'll add a nice little aurora to my collection so it's got that angled here at the top it's got that nice gold clip to it it's got that gold tone uh, right there and it just comes down to a tapered round end and slip cap and you've got a, an Aurora nib in, in section there so you know it's it it is a cartridge converter pen the downside for the price that you pay you don't get an Aurora uh, cartridge or you don't get an Aurora converter Aurora takes frustratingly to me a proprietary cartridge or converter. I got a bag full of standard international cartridges and converters sitting over here in my desk. As a matter of fact, bag full of them. But no, of course Aurora is going to take something I had to order and pay extra. And they're not cheap. To get a converter for an Aurora is like 20 bucks. So I haven't written with it yet because I've got a converter on the way. I was kind of hoping they would have chucked in at least a cartridge, but no such luck. So we'll find out how this uh, Aurora um, style actually works when I get a chance to write with it. Lastly, when I talked about stuff that I don't normally get to play with, I added to my collection a pen that has a style of nib that I've never played with before, and I was actually on the hunt for and was actually looking forward to trying and so I told you that uh, before I bought a lot of pens from Spearbob on eBay so I knew I was gonna get a decent pen that's probably been tested and uh, probably reconditioned at a decent price so um, and it just so happened somebody for my birthday had given me um, an eBay gift card for the exact amount of this pen so what does stylographic mean well let me show you what it's not here is a traditional style nib on this Waterman stalwart I was telling you about. Okay, um, that's probably the style of nib that most of you are used to. I just showed you another traditional style nib. Now, a stylographic nib is very different. Rather than having you know the 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 little spade looking style nib, a stylographic nib is one that is simply a little metal tube usually with a wire down the center and when you write with it you kind of have to hold it up a little more upright almost like you would a ballpoint or more like a pencil you don't hold it at quite the angle that you do on a regular old fountain pen if you want it to write properly and um, it looks and feels very differently but still writes very nicely so an American company named Incograph is what I got and here's Incograph this pen is probably from the 1940s. It is a lever filler. So in terms of its filling system, it should be very familiar to most people who are into any kind of traditional pens or some, you know, old pens. Now, let's see if I can show you what this looks like. I got a drop of ink on it right there. So you can see how it tapers down. It's plastic here, right? And, or it looks like plastic and you get a regular section and then you've got this little spire looking thing that the plastic that tapers up to that little metal point at the end and that is nothing more than a, a metal tube with a wire that kind of sticks 
out of it and it regulates the ink flow and you can actually feel it move up and down as you write with it so this is one of those I hadn't had in my collection until now and actually it writes pretty nicely um, Spear Bob Bob Robert if you will um, actually said that it's a nice writer and when I first inked it up um, it took just a little bit of use to get the ink flow really going um, so after the first little bit it wrote better and better the more I used it and I've been using this for the past couple of past past two days or so since I first got it uh, and inked it up and I was quite happy with it I was like this is all right you gotta I've discovered you gotta hold it just a little bit differently now stylographic pens I did print out an article um, as a matter of fact if you go to vintagepens.com um, you can find an article on it and I'm gonna read to you what I got from that website. Stylographic pens, often referred to as stylos or stylos if you prefer, have a writing tip consisting of a metal tube with a fine wire inside to regulate the ink flow. Modern drafting pens are similar construction but have tips that are square cut for even line width rather than the rounded for smoother writing like this one is rounded for more smoother writing. Stylos were the first mass-produced fountain pens to achieve broad market success. The inventor responsible was Duncan McKinnon, a Canadian druggist. McKinnon's ink pencil was patented in Canada and Britain in 1875 and in the US in 1876. Not long after, A.T. Cross entered the market with a slightly modified ver version of McKinnon's pen dubbed a stylograph. The rapid acceptance of nibbed fountain pens in the early 1880s and their um, forward eventually eroded the stylographic pens lead, but stylos remained a popular alternative all the way to the advent of the ballpoint, which is you know, in the 60s or so. In the USA, one of the most prominent and long-lived stylo manufacturers was Incograph, but many other firms offered stylos at some point or another. And they show uh, an incograph from 1925 um, here. They show an old McKinnon, a uh, couple of McKinnons, an incograph lever filler from 1948 that looks uh, very differently from this. So they were widely popular and were manufactured throughout the world. The UK was particularly a large producer through the first decades of the 20th century with Maybe Todd, probably the largest single maker. Winston Churchill reportedly used Conway Stewart stylos through the Second World War. Stylos tend to get short shrift from pen collectors, most of whom will pay more for nib pens, uh, even though their stylographic counterparts are much less common, meaning they're more rare. While stylos do not offer the line variation and responsiveness of a flexible conventional nib, it is true, they still remain eminently practical writing instruments with a strong novelty element. Writing with a stylo is a bit like using a wet roller ball with a bit more tooth but without any need to press down on the paper. And that's true. That little, um, that little wire does ride up and down quite well and it flows very nicely um, and it actually is kind of an enjoyable writing experience so far. So. This little incograph that I got, it's a little smaller than I thought it was going to be in terms of length. Um, it's not quite a pocket pen, but it's a little bit shorter than a full-size pen. To give you an example, um, here is what that Waterman, and here is what that Aurora, as far in terms of height. So you can tell Molary and Curly here, the uh, incograph, this burgundy incograph. Um, and, and by the way, it has a very nice uh, imprint here on the side. Um, writes nicely. So I've been looking forward to having a stylograph in my collection at some point and I saw the right pen at the right price and I just happened to have the gift card to get it so I said pulled the trigger on it and I got it. So those are my latest finds here in my pen collection. So just these four since my last video and uh, you know as time goes on I'll share with you some more so thanks for watching.